All right, it's seven o'clock. Shall we get started? Sure. All right, I will call this meeting of the bike ped transit to order. Mark, you have the uh, role, I assume? Sure, I um, have Peter Connor present, Nate Day, Ted Dockery, Ken Markert, Dan Ramsey, Dale Rhodes, Carrie Scheffner, and Jim Schutz. Uh, and I just saw, I think somebody else may have just joined. Or no, maybe not. Um, so I don't see Katie. I don't see Katie or Ella yet. Are you, are you? Oh, and Kathy Olson has joined us as well. So we have a quorum. We can get we can get started. All right, let's get started then. Uh, the first uh, order of business is the minutes for November sixteenth and December seventh. Can I get a motion for the minutes for those two dates? With Carrie on with approval. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second. All those in favor of approving the minutes of November 16th and 17th signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Our next item is the five-year street improvement program annual review design of Elmwood Avenue and other streets. So Mark, um, you wrote a memo. Do you wish to highlight your memo for us? Sure, uh, very briefly. Um, the uh, city is, is every year does a few streets for reconstruction or resurfacing. And we have a five-year street improvement, improvement program that we are going to start bringing to this committee annually, but earlier in the fall so that it's not here at the, in December. Um, it's something that we've decided we're gonna start doing. So we have that before you tonight and specifically the Elmwood Avenue project uh, and any other streets that you wish to comment on. Um, but let's focus on the Elmwood project first because that's the one that's most pressing. Um, we are gonna be, this, our public work staff is gonna be going out for um, uh, proposals. They're, they're designing this in the next few weeks and they wanted to know uh, what sort of surface, or what, what sort of bicycle accommodations, if any specifically, um, the committee would like to see on Elmwood. We have a complete streets policy, as you all recall. And so one, one of the, what I'm suggesting in my memo is that you, I know I'm not gonna review the memo here, I assume that you've read it now, but um, basically we wanna make sure that we have a street that works for all users of the street and uh, bicyclists and pedestrians in particular, we wanna make sure are accommodated. So we have um, some suggestions here. I've, I've heard a suggestion for bike lanes, I've heard um, that the street works well the way it is. Um, maybe add sharrows, which I've heard some mixed opinions on as to whether they are effective or not. Um, so basically that's, it's an open, I wanna open it up for you, for the committee to uh, discuss what, what you would like to see for the quarter, especially at the Park Street crossing. I think that's a, the Park Street intersection. I think that's a major area that we might wanna talk about as well. So with that, I'll turn it over to the committee. All right, has everybody had an opportunity to look over the, the uh, memo and do we have any comments, questions, or suggestions? I'll open it up for committee members for any comments that you may have. Anybody? Yes, I have some <clears throat> comments. Uh, was wondering about now that's considered a connector street. Uh, a collector street. It's a collector uh, street. yeah. So there's three types of functional classifications for streets. There's arterial streets like University Avenue, Allen Boulevard, Century, the Beltline, obviously. Collector streets that are uh, feeding the arterials uh, from the local streets. So Branch Street, Park Street are example of collector streets. Parmenter Street, actually Park Street going south might even be a minor arterial, but um, Elmwood Avenue has been designated a collector street. That doesn't, and generally our policy uh, has been over the years that we don't put bike lanes on local streets. I, I don't know of any place where we've done that. Um, we consider bike lanes along collector streets and higher where, where possible. Um, Elmwood, I mean, we, our focus has been on the north south streets through the city which of course there aren't as many because of the railroad tracks. So that's, they tend to be more of a focus for, for um, regional traffic. 
And so that's why we um, proceeded with bike lanes, focused with focused on bike lanes, uh, focused bike lanes along our north south streets. There we go. Um, in the past five to 10 years, we have um, the east west streets, we have not uh, focused on as much except for uh, Airport Road, Century Avenue from Parmenter Street West, um, and then also University Avenue from Brand Street East. Um, there's constraints with the arterial streets. Um, so University obviously is not going to have bike lanes because of narrow right of way, narrow terraces. So as a result, Elmwood Avenue has become a major east-west street route for bicyclists. Um, it's currently, probably, I, I would guess it's the heaviest used bicycle. Um, I would, I, I, my guess is that street carries more bicycle traffic than any other in the city is, is, is my strong hunch. And I would also wonder if it's carrying a lot more uh, vehicle traffic than some of the other east-west street uh, like Hubbard or South Avenue, uh, since it does connect with Old Middleton Road, and then you can pretty much follow it all the way out to uh, Greenway Station. Yes, uh, but, oh, sorry, go ahead. So one of the things I'm, what my thought here is, if we want uh why I'm gathering the speed limit on that is 25 miles an hour. Yes. Why couldn't we reduce the speed limit to 20 or 15? Because mainly it should be geared just for local traffic. That would be one idea I would have. Okay. Dan, Katie has her hand up. Katie. Go ahead, Katie. Thank you. Too many buttons for me to push. Um, Jim, I love that idea. And I proposed that when we were talking about um, problems with the school um, sock trails and Sean, uh, uh, sorry, proposed the speed decrease in the speed limit. And Sean Stowski said um, they really don't like to change the speeds uh, too often. And so he was not amenable to that idea, unfortunately. Um, my comment is, um, I think, I don't know if you guys all got to experience those tests. There's a little uh, circle and then the narrowing of the road. I really thought that the circle was great. Now I've seen a comment that a biker didn't feel comfortable in it, but I think it's um, I think it's a really excellent solution there. Um, and I don't know if that would work on Park and Elmwood. Uh, but anyway, um, I seem to be drawn to that idea. It slows the traffic down. Um, it does let a biker go at the same, you know, in line with a car. Um, and I guess that's my comment thus far. So Katie, you're advocating for that on, on Park and Elmwood? Well, kind of, because if you, it is a hard place to cross for pedestrians as well as cars and cyclists. But um, if you went with like a four way, then you're backing traffic up onto uh, University Avenue, you know, like people turning off of University onto Park. If there was a four way stop there, you, it's going to back everything up. Um, and uh, that's that's my my first bid on that intersection. Dan, Carrie has her hand up. Carrie, go ahead, please. Thanks. Yeah, I I agree with Katie that I thought the the traffic calming circles um, that we piloted this last summer. I think 
I think those should be installed. I, I don't know if it should be at Park Street. I think that's something we should, you know, maybe think about, um, but definitely at the other intersections between Parmenter and, and uh, Park Street. Because I think one thing to consider is that we're both trying to make it safe for bicyclists and just slowing down traffic in general. So I think that that, that achieves that goal. Um, and then in terms of the other kind of uh, proposal or suggestions in the memo, um, I, I also think that, you know, adding the bike lanes or pavement mark markings for bicycles is also a good idea. We should, we should you know, do that. I think that's a, a great idea. And then if we don't do the traffic calming circle at Park Street in Elmwood, something should be there. So I don't know if it should be the bike oriented RFB, but something definitely should be there. Cause I think that that's always been like Katie mentioned an uh, issue for pedestrians and bicyclists. Nate is next. Nate, hey, go ahead, please. <clears throat> um, I'm just thinking about this now, but would uh, the city be amenable to a, a right in right out there? And, and eliminate left turns from vehicles. That at might, Elmwood and Park? Yeah, at Elmwood and Park. So I mean, are you you're suggesting a barrier in the middle? Lines. You're suggesting a barrier a barrier on Park Street so, so people can't drive straight through, or, or what are you suggesting? Well, I'm thinking um, right in, right out from Park Street. So. Um, like I said, I haven't given it much thought. I'm just trying to reduce some of those conflict points. I mean, it's such a bottleneck there. The <laughs> university so close. Um, yeah, I don't know if it would take a median or if just signage or what. Um, the other point I wanted to make was, um, I know Sharrows is on here and I think I read, uh, it might've been Tad's comment too that um, I, I just don't think Sharrows are a good option for this road. Um, it's uh, so you don't like Sharrows for uh, all along the stretch of Elmwood. Is that what you're saying, Nate? I, I don't. I, I don't okay. think Sharrows is a, a good option, especially since this is the most used bike route in the city. Um, okay. Sharrows would be uh, kind of a shortcoming for. It. I would think, not giving it the, the due it deserves, especially as we're complete streets now. And I don't see that as the, the right one. So what does the committee then think of, since it's Elmwood that is gonna be resurfaced up to, to Park Street and it's almost kind of two separate issues. Um, so we have a couple suggestions for what to do at Park and Elmwood. Well, how does the committee feel about um, the resurfacing of Elmwood itself. What does the committee feel as though should be done there? Nate, you, you're not in favor of, of Cheryl's and I and I understand that. So what what would be your suggestion for the length of uh, Elmwood then? I think if we did bike lanes, uh, you would have to eliminate some on-street parking to do that. And I think that's the last uh, meeting opened up with one or asking about uh, about this very issue. And I think we, we got into it a little bit. Uh, but um, yeah, the parking issue and if there's any alternatives on the table right now, options to look at, but it, it sounds like the, the design has kind of already happened. Is that right? No, it's not happened. It hasn't been done yet, okay. No, no, that's why we kind of scrambled to schedule this meeting because I, I found out a couple of weeks ago that that uh, the public works wanted to get the design out the door by um, by mid January, early to mid January. Oh, okay. Thanks for explaining that. I, th yeah. I think yeah, seeing a couple cross sections might help this group um, better view it. You know, just if there's bike lanes on both sides, or if there's parking on one side, uh, bike lane. You know, are the lanes going to go down in width? Uh, yeah. So the street is is 36 feet wide. Uh, which is what Parmenter Street was is is north of University Avenue. So when you have a 36 foot wide street, in order to add bike lanes on both sides, 
that requires the removal of one um, side parking from one side of the street. Uh, my biggest concern with that along Elmwood is uh, twofold. One, of course, our downtown, uh, where there's already a lot of concern about a uh, shortage of, of parking. Um, and then the block behind Parkwood Plaza between uh, Park Street and Mayflower over here. Hard to see with my cursor, but uh, that is from what I have noticed, and Katie, you, you probably have the most expertise of your, because you're so close there, you have the most uh, experience, I should say, um, of, of noticing parking. I, I think because of uh, fairly tight parking at, at Parkwood Plaza, I've noticed a lot of, I, I think mainly employees that park along Elmwood. Um, and then there's also duplexes on the south side. So if we were to put bike lanes on along Elmwood, I would recommend, um, first of all, keeping having the parking stay on the north side of Elmwood by Parkwood Plaza. That would be because there's no there's very there's very few driveways there compared to the duplexes on the south side, so there's not as much of an impact on loss of parking on the south side. But then in downtown Middleton, um, from let's say Gunderson Funeral Home west to Terrace to uh, the railroad tracks, I'm reluctant to recommend, I, I do not recommend the removal of on-street parking. Um, my experience as a both pedestrian and bicyclist and just observing what happens along Elmwood, it's because of all the parking and uh, the intersections and a lot of pedestrians, it's, it's hard for motorists to drive through here quickly anyway, and for that matter, for bicyclists to zip through there. So everyone is going at a very slow speed and, and is proceeding generally ca quite cautiously. So I don't think there's a need for, um, because speeds are slower for out for bicyclists to be in their own lane. Uh, but that's, that would be my suggestion. Are there any other suggestions, any other questions? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, if, if you go with one parking on one side of the street and two bike lanes, you know, what do you do when you get a snowy day? Where do the cars go? Um, um, you know, because we it's it's even odd parking all the time, and it's gonna it's gonna probably require a, a change in in the in the ordinances to park on that street. It's only parking on one side. I don't know. I mean, I just I when I drove down the street, and there's a lot of you know, a lot of older homes there and they got one car garages and, and, and a couple cars. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, I mean, it's, it's difficult to, to get away without parking cars, but what do you do on a snowy day? Unless the city starts passing an ordinance to, to have the uh, snow days where everybody has to get their cars off the street. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Kathy? Yeah, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. One thing that at the intersection of Elmwood and Park is that entrance that goes into Parkwood Plaza that people use as an exit. And it is kind of confusing. They shouldn't be coming out of there, but when you're trying to cro cross and then there's a car waiting you to come out of there. Do you know which one I'm talking about? It's closest to yeah. the- I'll go yeah. there with a the street view image. Yeah, okay. That's one thing that that's if we could change that somehow so people can't come out that way, instead they can just go in that way. Another thing I heard, and Katie, you may have heard this too, is since they refinished uh, or resurfaced uh, or rebuilt actually the old Middleton Road, that the speed on that east portion of Elmwood, that since they're going faster on that, that this is something that's increased the speed a little bit. And if they remove um, parking on one side, could any thought be given to adding pedestrian islands at the intersections? So mm -hmm. that that um, when you usually when it's just wide open and there's no parking, it makes I, I feel like cars go faster, but with pedestrian islands, they'll kind of be forced to watch where they're going and slow it down a little bit. And if you're and I would not be opposed to seeing a four way stop at Middleton Street instead of like the, the roundabout. I didn't, I thought that was a little overkill for Middleton Street, but it was Bristol Street that really had the concern and they never had time to actually do the study for a roundabout there. So just wanted to add that. 
here's the uh, starting with what Kathy um, began with is this intersection that, that this driveway that she's talking about. That so is a one can, way, so they can only go in there. Well, unfortunately, there are people who will try to exit from there. Yeah, but even a closer to University Avenue, that's a really weird in and out for that parking lot. Because people come off University Avenue and they try to turn left in there. Mm -hmm. even, and even though now there's a sign, I think, that says they can't until this. Is there one? <clears throat> oh. Well, what uh, they, uh, yeah. Ideally, what they would do. Very right. weird. Well, ideally, people who have, are coming from University Avenue will have turned into Parkwood Plaza at the University Avenue driveway. That's obviously the best choice. Right. Um, and and so do you see the car just beyond your whoop, right there? Yep. So yep. if that car is going to turn into this shopping center at that first driveway, don't move yet. Don't move oh. yet. Sorry. And there are other cars on Elmwood going toward downtown. And so if this car that's in the picture has its right signal on and it's going to turn in the shopping center, sometimes those cars at the stop sign think that that car is going to turn right onto Elmwood. Mm -hmm. And yep. they're putting their signal on to go into the shopping center. Um, but you have to turn your signal on early enough to not to let the cars behind you know what you're doing. Um, and so I feel like if there are different ways we can really slow everyone down, I don't think we're gonna be able to change the driveways into the shopping centers, but if we can make everyone have to really pay attention here, it would help everything. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like the idea, Kathy, of the, the road furniture on uh, mm -hmm. the island. I had not thought of that, but um, it, it doesn't seem like a simple answer, whichever, whatever way we go, it's gonna be very. I think easy. I missed Kathy's comment about road furniture. Where, where did you say that was, Kathy? Well, I think. Oh, sorry, Kathy, go for it. Go ahead, Katie. You, I think you all know what I understand, what I meant. Well, You're I think what Kathy's talking about is like, um, if you were going to cross right here at the stop sign across uh, Park Street, like if you're walking toward downtown. Yeah, I think, Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, that in that crosswalk crossing Park Street, you're talking about a traffic I, a little pedestrian island that if you had to stop in the middle of the crossing, you could and be there safely. For right, that would be one thing. And even if there was a small roundabout, you could still have that. But I was thinking even more up and down Elmwood at different intersections, because if you're doing, because I know on Hubbard with one side uh, parking, that people don't kind of, follow where the trait where the road is you know they 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 kind of swerve to the middle of something that and it should be further to the side where there's no parking but it would actually just be some, something visual that makes people um aware that when they're driving where they're you know that there's intersections there's places for pedestrians to go like you say halfway and then uh, go the the other way even at the mid block crosswalk i wouldn't be opposed to seeing something like that um i just i think that there's there's some merit to having those so mm -hmm. and and kathy you said hubbard is parking on one side only correct mm. yeah can i <laughs> yeah i didn't realize that either uh, that's and, and that's a pretty easy street to bike down I would say I've heard people prefer biking down Hubbard when they can well mainly because of the road is freshly recovered re resealed I think sure Elmwood isn't parked by people with um, permits from the school art is it absolutely as <laughs> yes so no, that's, that's not a permit no park to, permits but <laughs> right the people school uh, um People going to the high school park on Elmwood, but they don't need a permit. 
they don't need a permit for it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. People on Elma don't need permits. Okay. But well, also I, I like the idea of um, some uh, the street furniture, if you will. But it, it would seem to me that, and you know, whether or not it can be done without a, a major all overhaul of Park Street too, it would seem that the intersection at Park and Elmwood would be the perfect intersection to put a, a, a regular roundabout in simply because it would keep the traffic flowing and you wouldn't have the necessarily have the issues then with the backup from University Avenue. Um, because any kind of thing that stops the traffic there is gonna start to back up the traffic from University Avenue. And that's gonna be what the engineers don't wanna do. Um, you know, yeah, this Dan, can the roundabout serve as a pedestrian island as well? It seems like that could kind of do double duty. No, Mark is shaking no, his head. No, because you don't have pedestrians go to the center of a roundabout. At, well, there is a concept of, um, of a crossing a street. Now I can't remember the name of it, but basically we're, we're everyone gets a stop at a traffic signal and then you can cross in any direction you want, including diagonally. A scramble we crossing. Scramble, thank you. Yeah, I knew there was a word like that. I was scrambling trying to think of it. Uh -huh. um, so, but that would not be, the way the circle or roundabout would, would function here, there would not be pedestrians. There would be, we would not want pedestrians to enter that space. That's where you would have instead the, you know, an island a pedestrian refuge. Um, you know, on one side of the street or the other. How do the snowplows deal with an island? Um, they're not, so So there's an island at the corner of Park Lawn and North Avenue. And what I've noticed every once in a while is a driver hits it and knocks the keep right sign down. I don't know if the snowplow drivers, I, I mean, you know, by now they're used to them. I'm sure they're not, anytime there's obstacles in the street, I'm sure they would rather not see obstacles, but, um, you know, our drivers know the city well, and so they get to know where these islands are, and there has to be a keep right sign on it, which makes it visible. So I, I don't think that's a huge deal, a huge concern. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to do both? Like, like Dan is saying, like road furniture, an island, pedestrian island, and a roundabout right here? I think, first of all, when you say roundabout, this I just don't see the traffic circle like you tested. Yeah, a on circle. A circle is different than. I mean, a roundabout is a much bigger design. Yeah, no, also, I mean, I mean a circle. Okay, I, I just wanted to clarify the terminology. Yeah, um, thank you. No, it's okay. Um, the other issue is that I, I would want to also emphasize that the city has only budgeted for street resurfacing. If there's anything that starts involving um, adding medians and, and such. Uh, budget will be limited for that type of work and that, that could be done in the future. But in terms of how we want this to be designed the rest of the quarter, obviously that's why we're having this discussion now. Some of the improvements that you're talking about would not be done as part of this project. And, and, and that's why, uh, Mark, that um, this committee in subsequent years will be getting this stuff a lot earlier so that we right. can be more of that process, and, uh, correct? Yep, that's the entire goal. And I should have thought of it this summer and, and we, we just didn't think of it. So, but that's on our list now for for basically when the when Public Works adopts their five-year street plan every summer, then that will immediately you know, come to us for our import. Well, yeah, within a month or so. I mean, that's that's the time to do it. Yep. <clears throat> and so oh, I'm sorry, Katie. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't just be talking without asking, but is that something then we can put off just till a year from now? Or does it have to be put? So, so I guess, you know, anything that if there's anything that's substantially, you know, that costs, a, that costs, a, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, I would say, then yes, that would have to be go through the budgeting process next year. If it's something that's fairly nominal, um, you know, I, again, I can't speak for the for the budget, I don't know what the budget is that was allocated for Elmwood, and we won't know what the what the cost is until the bids come in, um, you know, over the winter. So, 
I can't speak to any of that, but I just, you know, anything that's that's going to require a significant investment is going to have to be budgeted. But a year, not five years, you know, we can. That's the council's prerogative next year to, sure. if you want to gotcha. prioritize that. Yep. Got it. And it's a, the Katie, although that it may not be something that would be budgeted in, into next year, there's nothing wrong with if the uh, bike and ped committee wants to send along a recommendation for what to do next year with the resurfacing and suggest that um, these other items get looked at in the future to get it on the radar. That's certainly something that can be done too. Uh, Kathy, great. I think you were next. Um, I just wanted to say, we do have those um, temporary installations and I'm wondering if that would be something, if it can't be done next year, maybe they could just try out the temporary part of it. And having the complete streets program now is policy. I think adding those islands, it's something that may not be the first choice of public works, but as, as we've identified that this is something we're very serious about doing and protecting the pedestrians and other users, that this is something we really have to con consider them first. Nate? Yeah, um, something that's a little goofy at this intersection is right where Mark is now, that north end of Park Street, um, there's no bike lanes, but on the other right. side of Hollywood, there's bike lanes. And then on the other side of university, there's bike lanes. So there's this short part from here, the university that doesn't have those. Is, is what, I don't know what's in the future plan for this part of Park Street either. Is that supposed to be bike lanes in the future or not gonna happen because of- um, just I, mean, I, guess, I guess I would say that's going beyond the scope of this discussion. I, I think it's good to be aware of it, but it's not, we didn't specifically put Park Street cross section on the agenda. Um, but as it relates to the Elmwood intersection and you know Park Street, I think that's, I, you know, it, it, I just would caution you not to focus on Park Street too much. I, I also wanted to add that this driveway here that people turn into, obviously that affects the how the intersection functions as well, like Katie pointed out with the right turning vehicles. This is a route that uh, delivery vehicles will use. Um, so that is something, you know, to keep in mind too, that as we, whatever we end up doing at this intersection, we have to still keep in mind that delivery vehicles have to travel through here. And I don't know if they travel eastbound uh, or if they come from, you know, or if they travel westbound behind the alley, I'm, I'm not sure. I think this is inbound, supposed to be inbound only. So I think they're supposed to come in off of Park Street. Maybe Katie, you know. It's supposed to be one way there. Yeah, yeah. So, Ted? Um, I was just, I was just thinking uh, when Mark started talking about the budget for resurfing, I, resurfacing. I was just kind of curious. I know, Mark, you've expressed uh, frustration with the cost of green paint for bike lanes at intersections in the past, it, especially because it fades very quickly in our climate, uh, or at least I'm guessing that part. M Madison's been experimenting over the years, and they've come up with a mix and an application that seems to be more weather resistant. Uh, Fitchburg is starting to has started installing them as well. So I think they've come up with a product and, and an application that is can withstand the climate to some degree. Uh, yes, this, that's a project I'm going to work on this winter, probably in January, where I'm going to really get into the uh, green pavement uh, concept. Uh, okay, for another project that I'm working on. Got it. Because I I was I was just kind of this is sort of an idle curiosity. I was wondering. Uh, if any of our local um, asphalt contractors have any experience with actually, you know, colored asphalt, like the asphalt itself is actually green. Um, do we know? Um, I don't know. Okay. Sorry. Just, nope. Mark? No worries. Mark? Yep. Can you... Yeah. You know, if uh, it was mentioned that Hubbard, I mean, that Hubbard Avenue is one way. I mean, not one way, but one side parking. Right. And there's bicycle lanes there. Do they no, have the not, same no. number of traffic no. accidents as no. Elmwood? There are no bike lane lanes marked on any of the east-west streets okay. in this entire part of the city. Um, 
there's parking on one side on Hubbard is because it's a narrower, I think it's a 28 foot wide street. So there was mm -hmm. only room for, you know, for parking on one side with that cross section. But as a result of that one side parking, there appears to be less accidents on that street. I don't, I, I wouldn't be prepared to say that. I, I don't okay. know. Thank you. You know, I, for the, for what it's worth, I have never heard of, of any bicyclists on Elmwood, given how much it's used, and obviously it's much safer than University Avenue, mm -hmm. I think bicyclists are, gen especially commuters, are, are generally comfortable with Elmwood. If someone's coming out Old Middleton Road, um, they could easily get over to Hubbard if they wanted to at Countryside Lane, uh, but I think based on how many people are biking down Elmwood, they just, you know, bicyclists are just like drivers. They want to take the most direct route when they're commuting. Mm -hmm. And, but they're also, you know, most people are not going to bike where it's not safe, although sometimes you don't have a choice or not as safe as it could be. I, you know, I'm not necessarily advocating bike lanes um, because I'm not convinced that it's, you know, as, as significant a regional quarter as the North South streets were. We do have stop signs along Elmwood at, maybe I should look at a map instead. We have stop signs. Um, Sorry, I'm forgetting how to get out of this. I want to get to this view. Oh, it's, well, that works. So we have um, coming from the east, we have uh, stop signs at Maple Street, which is right here. That's a um, stop signs on Elmwood, not on Maple. We have stop signs at on Elmwood at Mayflower. It's obviously, the stop at Park Street. We now have one the, the, a pair at Bristol. So that's the fourth intersection. And then Parmenter Street. I, personally would, wouldn't mind seeing some at Cayuga and Elmwood. I just think that would make that safer intersection, but that's that's a personal opinion. Um, so because of all these stop signs, I think there's a lot fewer people that drive this entire route and, and don't drive it as quickly as they do a street that doesn't have so many stops. Um, if I wanna go into Mass and I jump up to University Avenue, I don't, you know, I, I mean, I might, if I leave City Hall, I might I go down to Park Street, but then I'm going to make a left turn almost always instead of going straight because I don't want to have to stop at Mayflower. So I think the idea of regional traffic using Elmwood is, um, you know, it, it's not as significant as it is on, on Branch and Parmenter and, and Park Street. Um, but I don't, I'm not opposed to bike lanes. I just would be cautious about downtown taking parking away on one side of the street. That, that would make me, we're, we're, Kathy Olson's gonna have her phone ringing off the hook. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? So I haven't heard the discussion and had the discussion. Does the, is there anyone on the committee who has a suggestion that they would like to make a motion to move forward? for public works to take a look at in the design of the resurfacing of Elmwood. This would not be, you know, any major overhauls with uh, the intersection at Park Street or anything like that. This would all be in conjunction with the, the resurfacing, which um, for the most part by definition and budget would be, would be paint. And Dan, while you're, um, asking that question, I just went over here behind Parkwood Plaza to show you how many cars are parked here. I mean, it is, I don't know when this was big in July of 2019, but you know, it's, it's, it's substantial how many vehicles get parked here. Um, and I, I can only surmise it's, in fact, I'm sure it's employees. I, I, I know it's employees. And sometimes shoppers, that parking lot does get full. Yeah. Yeah, quickly, and it's not an easy one to get in. <laughs> right. Some, some people would rather park on the street than if you have any kind of large vehicle to park in that parking lot. Yeah. And there has been the debate in the past. Um, I know Alder Olson has brought it up, um, and Katie, I think you have maybe two. Um, the trade off of having on street parking versus not, and what that does for perceptions for, for speeds and all that. I mean, there is, you know, having on street parking does. Um, cause the average person to be maybe a little more cautious. Uh, mm -hmm. But you have to balance that with the nature of the traffic that's traveling along the road. So 
you know, Elmwood is not a high speed thoroughfare in my, from my observation, but again, Kathy and Katie, you, you, you maybe get calls about it I, that I'm not aware of. And then we have the speed in the memo I had the speed, the uh, speed data, uh, you probably saw that. Uh, I can pull it up if anybody wants to see it. It's, it's, you know, it's probably not that out of character for what we have on, on any other residential type street where, you know, most people are traveling the speed limit, but you get, you definitely get quite a few that will go within 10 and every once in a while you get someone that goes more than 10 over and 10 over the speed limit at 25, you know, when it's posted at 25 and you're going 35, that's a noticeably much faster speed uh, as opposed to going 10 over when the speed limit is 55, for example. So it's a, it's a degree of magnitude, but um, here, let me know what you want to see in the, in the packet. Carrie? Um, yeah, so I was just going to say, like, I understand, like, the Sharos were kind of maybe not favorable, but what about bike route signage? I just think it's important to, like, let drivers know that bikes belong on the road, too, and so I think maybe the signage could be could be helpful, um, and then, again, like, I, I think the traffic calming circles would be something to explore. Um, as well. So I just wanted to see what the what others thought about the bike signage. I think I wrote that in the memo. Um, there, this is uh, has been designated uh, U.S. Bike Route 30. Uh, let me get out of this memo, out of this uh, Street View image. Um, just a second. We don't need to be driving around anymore. Um, so as part of Bike Route 30, we would have um, signage that we would be putting up, but we won't do that every block. You know, it's, it's, I think we would, signage certainly will be along the route, but, you know, not every block, I would guess. So, so every few blocks on each side, Mark, something like that? Uh, yeah, few. that's that's what I'm envisioning, yep. Okay. I'm not used to doing this on one on one screen, so bear with me. I'm trying to get back to the packet. Can't even see where that is now. <laughs> and this, these recommendations would go over, like if we make a motion, the recommendations would go to public works. Is that correct? Yeah, public our public works. works. Yes, correct. Okay. All right, well, I don't know where the packet went. <laughs> Well, while Mark is looking at the, the packet, is there, um, again, I'll go back to my question, is there anybody that um, Oops, feels strongly me. about um, one thing or another that they'd like to make a motion to recommend to Public Works that this gets put in as part of the design for the resurfacing of Elmwood? Any of the recommendations that we've uh, spoken of, whether it's bike lanes, Cheryl's, parking on one side, signage. Um, Dan, this is Katie. I think for myself, I would recommend that they just go ahead with the paving as planned and that we will want to do some traffic calming measures after that. And do you have, um, do you have, it would be nice to send to public works some kind of um, idea of the traffic calming measures that you'd be interested in potentially looking at. Are there specific ones that, yeah. so if you yep. would make, if you would make a motion to, to that effect so that at least we can send it on and have the discussion then uh, at Public Works and be able to uh, at least potentially look at the cost, even if it doesn't turn out to be feasible with next year's resurfacing budget. Sure. Um, then I will move that we recommend to Public Works um, regular paving with the addition of pedestrian islands and traffic circles 
at some of the intersections at Elmwood. Do I need to I, specify where? Yeah, I, I think you, we, we, they, they're gonna ask me what, which ones, so. Um, okay. And, and I would also point out one more thing, and I'm sorry to interrupt your motion. I just remembered it. Um, Alder Olson and I had a conversation about this and I don't know if she was gonna bring it up or not, but I thought I would mention it quickly. Um, another idea for traffic calming could be speed, speed humps. Um, especially maybe east of Maple Street, um, you know, as, as we don't have stop signs there past Maple Street and connecting with Old Middleton. So that idea has also been raised. Um, and there was a person who came to last week's uh, meeting that then wasn't able to connect to the meeting because of the, the Zoom error I made. Um, so that person also was asking about speed, uh, speed humps and speed limit signs reinforcing the 25 mile hour speed limit sign. So I wanted to mention that before you make your motion. Katie, would you like to include that in your motion? Yes, I would. Um, I'd like to recommend speed humps east of Maple Street. I'd like to recommend, and Kathy, help me out. I'd like to help uh, recommend pedestrian islands, and Carrie, help me out, at Park and Elmwood at, is it Bristol and Elmwood, Kathy? It is Bristol and Elmwood, but my understanding is they're not going to resurface Bristol this year. And that way we could still do another test on a little roundabout or a little traffic circle there instead. I mean, that's okay. what I'm understanding is that's not part of this project. Okay. I think it stops, I think it starts at, from Bristol Street East, I think is how it, it's going. east, yeah. The yeah. east side. And traffic circles at at and a traffic circle at Park and Elmwood. Mm -hmm. And signage. And I think that's my and signage for the bike route. Bike route signage. Okay. Bike route signage. So um, bike. That's my complete motion. So I'm not sure about the traffic, about the pedestrian islands and a traffic circle and whether that's feasible or not. Um, I'm not sure if I've seen that anywhere either in the mass scenario. When I think of the traffic circles, not, not only the one that we did, the experiment we did this summer, but I think of uh, the street that goes to, or the uh, route that goes to, um, uh, right by Edgewood College, there's a, a nice, there's a street there that, um, I think it's called Edgewood, Edgewood Avenue, I think, um, that has a series of, of islands, uh, of um, traffic circles. Um, and I, those do not have pedestrian refuges at the crosswalks. And I think that would be hard to do because the circle kind of forces cars to bend into, you know, towards the side street. So do you take that crosswalk away if we put a traffic circle there? No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I'm going to go since we're talking about this now. I'll, I'll go down there. Um, and yeah, I'm still trying to form this motion. Yeah. Um, I just can I ask a question about the traffic circle? And it forces the cars into the crosswalk, which doesn't seem very safe to me. Is it just the one that they tried this last year, or should it be smaller? that it doesn't force the cars, to, because that's not safe for pedestrians because you don't know what's going on. <laughs> but um, a car has to cross the crosswalk anyway, if right? You're going, if you're going straight down Elmwood and you're going around, you went around that, uh, around that circle, you had to go into the crosswalk. It, I mean, you have to slow down somewhat, but I- You mean into Bristol? Hey, can you, oh, you're not seeing the. I was wondering why you guys weren't seeing what I have on the screen here. Sorry, I keep forgetting that. I, I have Kathy a, means that you have to swipe into the adjacent yeah. crosswalk. Not that you have to cross over the one that you have to cross over anyway, but that you have to kind of swerve into the yes, yes. next exactly. one on your side. So here's a. Do you see the screen now? The uh, mm -hmm. this is at this is at Edgewood and um, mm -hmm. some. Keys Avenue, I guess it is. Yeah. Um, and so this mm -hmm. is probably, this is a circle that is, I think, a little smaller than the one that we experimented with this year. A lot smaller. <laughs> yeah. 
considerably smaller. Yeah. <laughs> and so this, in my view, there's plenty of room for a, mm -hmm. a motorist to get around here. Mm -hmm. One thing that I wonder about these circles and, you know, do people go around it to make a left turn or do they cut in front of it? And what was your observation, Kathy, with our experiment this summer? Did Were, were cars turning left in front of it? Donate. I I'm a poor one to ask. I did not use Elmwood this summer. <laughs> I, I um I went so I witnessed people turning left in front of the circle until there was signage. Oh good, yeah. Because there was a delay and when the signage went up. And then they were going around it to make a left turn. Yeah. The one thing that I experienced this summer uh as a pedestrian with checking out that traffic circle is when you went to cross uh, and a car was going around it, you didn't, you weren't able to tell whether the car was gonna go straight or whether it was gonna make a right turn. And I think that had to do with the size of it because they did have to come over uh, to the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if there's some happy medium for the size of the circle, not as big as the test one, yeah. maybe yeah. slightly larger than the one in the picture. Is there a standard size? I don't know that there's a standard yet. Um, obviously, first responders want to make sure they can get around their vehicles yeah. around it. And that was part of the trial this summer. Um, I think the circle was probably a little bit too large this summer, but I, I didn't monitor the project as closely as Abby and, and Behe did. Mm -hmm. Way too um, large. But I, but I do know that when I travel on this road that it, I, I find these quite effective. I was just going to say, I think this is a good example, Mark. Yeah. yeah. And, and you don't see that there would be any way to put pedestrian islands on the edges. I'm just listening to Jim I, and you're not sure what's going on. And these, if you have a young... Uh, you know, like an elementary age chi uh, child and you want to make sure that they're feeling comfortable crossing. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just not sure I've seen that done in, in the mountain area. I, I, you know, again, we can, that can be part of the motion if you'd like, but I guess I would ask, I, I, I would suggest that at Park Street at Elmwood, you, you mentioned what your higher priority is. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you could say you'd like both, but if only one is preferable, then um, you know, maybe give us that direction as well. Yeah. In my motion, I'll say I'd like both. If, if, if only one is possible. Okay. I think, I think the traffic circle. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, wait, am I done with this motion? So what I wrote down is that you're advocating for, you didn't say anything about bike lanes. So I assume that you're not recommending bike lanes as part of your motion. I'm not, I'm not. Um, so I'll put that in the motion. Um, no bike lanes, speed humps east of Maple Street, pedestrian islands and a traffic circle at Park and Elmwood with the priority being the traffic circle and uh, bike route signage. Katie, does that encompass what you wanted? I believe it does. I think you mentioned the pedestrian islands throughout different intersections, didn't you, or no? I believe I did, but I said Bristol and Elmwood, but you said that wasn't gonna be done yet, so okay, um, well, that can be added later. Okay, I just, okay. Not to drag, this, but I could throw one more option in there. Uh, I heard speed humps. Um, you could do the raised crosswalks, which would kind of act as speed humps and the, the people would be a little bit higher. You know, everyone driving trucks these days, it'd be a little more visible at the intersection. I can amend my motion. I'm happy to amend my motion to add raised crosswalks. Okay, did you um, get them up? Yeah, but where would you like to see those? I, the speed hump, and, and, and Kathy, I don't mean to speak for, for you. I, I <laughs> wasn't sure if you were going to comment about that or not. I just wanted to make sure that was part of the... I, I know that they tried to do the uh, mirroring of the street at that mid-block crosswalk between Bristol and Park, and that wasn't as widely, wildly received, but uh, 
that might be an application to put in a raised crosswalk there or further on the east side of Elmwood. I think the concern with the speeding on Elmwood is is that this the, you have quite a distance here if you look here's Maple Street where I'm pointing to and I'm kind of you know mid middle midway between Maple Street and, and countryside down here or close to gateway so there's a bend here and and cars if there's a, if there's any place where they're speeding along Elmwood my my sense is that it's this 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 stretch in particular um, and I think that's where uh, the resident was advocating uh, speed homes and you know a couple right. of them along the route. And you see that on Old Middleton Road too. There, there are speed humps. So in that oh. sense, you know, it's it's uh, consistent with what, what they've done on Old Middleton Road. There's, um, there should be a couple here. But I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't see them at the moment, but anyway, I think that was the, yeah, I don't see them now, but but there are a couple. I think that's one right there. Oh yeah. Yep. Right there. Yeah, there's the I'm and surprised there's just a sign. Isn't it <laughs> on Maywood where they have the raised crosswalks? Where is that? Maywood. Maywood. I raised. think that was uh, just recently Maywood. in the last couple of years. So I maybe there's not. certain spots where that would work, the raised crosswalks. They no have any pumps, but I don't know if they have the crosswalks. Okay. There is no raised crosswalk at Maywood. Uh, no, I, I don't think we have any in the city. I mean, I if we're looking for or ideas about, are we looking for ideas about where to put raised crosswalks? Because. On Elmwood. Are they, you know, are they as significant uh, an enhancement at a stop sign? I, I would think. I think I they. Think I, I think they are, and the reason uh, the uh, continuous continuous sidewalk, which is the other name for them, is a significant enhancement for people using mobility devices because they no longer have to go down into the street at car level to be more easy to run over, and then come out of the street at the end. Um, so it's mm. it's a significant enhancement for people using mobility devices if, for the same reason for the same reason that curb cuts are an improvement not just for people using wheelchairs but for people moving heavy loads. Continuous sidewalks are a, a literal step up over curb cuts for those same people for the, the same reason. So it, it ends up benefiting everybody. Um, That's a good point. I like how you, I, I like um, Tad how you describe that, and I've heard that term before too. I just had not thought of it in the context of, of this order, but absolutely, that's a, a way to prioritize uh, pedestrian circulation at intersections, and and people like you said, people who use mobility devices. Would mid block cross mid block crosswalks be considered the same as your intersection that you just mentioned, Mark? Sure. So we could, there's the one between Bristol and uh, Park. Park. But I think this, what the resident was saying last week, and I'm not in the right spot anymore, but what the resident was saying is that they wanted, uh, you know, some speed humps um, in a couple locations along, you know, away from intersections. And yeah. I I'm just referring to what the feedback I heard about uh, last summer's uh, narrowing of the street and what they would prefer to see there is uh, maybe a raised crosswalk or some something in that air, in that mid block area. Mm -hmm. In the mid block. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a good idea. I think that's I would I would recommend that. Okay. And I do believe I amended my motion so that's included now. So raised crosswalk crosswalks at mid block. Uh, I'll just leave it like that for now. At the mid block um, pedestrian or mid, mid block walkway. Uh, and then also, did you want to recommend them at any other location? Could we recommend them at park? 
Yeah. I mean, if you, you know, I, I don't have enough experience with these. So if somebody's turning off of Park Street, um, you know, and then they immediately hit a speed hump at, at a crosswalk, I don't know if that raises any concerns from public work standpoint, but, you know, our focus is trying to make this safer for pedestrians and people just, you know, they have to be designed so that they're not too, um, you know, too jarring for, for people. You don't want that to cause a vehicle to, you know, go off course either. So yeah, well, and, and a, a pointy hump wouldn't it be comfortable to walk on either. Well, of course, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, so we'll assume that they're pros and they know how to do these, right? Mm -hmm. I really like the raised crosswalk concept at, you know, downtown Middleton. I mean, where, you know, places where there's a lot of pedestrian uh, traffic uh, that really is, the, but if you want to recommend them at, at, at Park and, and Elmwood, we can see what the public works staff say. Well, I would have a question about doing it at Park and Elmwood. I think earlier we identified several problems with that intersection and with the uh, driveways coming in and out of Parkwood Plaza, mm -hmm. would we be better off to, uh, as somebody mentioned earlier, maybe Dan, you did, that, okay, this isn't part of the resurfacing, but we do need to take a look at this and come up with some type of resolution, how we can better uh, make this intersection safer for pedestrians, bicyclists. And I think that this, you know, obviously is gonna be an ongoing, an ongoing conversation. Some of these, these um, suggestions will forward to uh, public works and we may find that some do works, uh, some aren't possible, some we simply can't afford. So I appreciate the uh, Katie's motion in, in that it encompasses um, some of the ideas that we've all come up with, uh, kind of our um, our wish list, if you will. Um, Katie, if that's your motion, and Mark, that you have that, um, do we have a second for Katie's motion? Anyone want to second Katie's motion? I will second it. Jim will second it. Is there any more discussion or question on Katie's motion? And I have one question. Um, as part of that, was there a couple speed humps east of Maple Street or not? I didn't know if she had Yes, said. there were. Okay, yes. okay. I, I had written that down, but I, I didn't yes. want to put those in your mouth, so. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna vote on this motion. Mark, before we vote on the motion, would you just give us a quick summary? No bike lanes. Uh, a couple speed humps east of Maple Street, raised crosswalks at the mid-block walkway between Bristol and uh, Park, and then also at Park Elmwood. Um, you had mentioned a traffic circle at Park and Elmwood and pedestrian islands with the priority being the traffic circle, and then bike route signage. Katie, does that sound correct? It's so much more succinct when Mark says it. Very good. <laughs> Any more questions or comments? If not, all those in favor of Katie's motion signify uh, just, a mo signify. just a moment. Uh, is, is it going to be allowed parking on both sides of the street side, the street then, or one side? There's no oh, bike lane, so parking would remain on both sides of the street. Okay, thank you. Okay. All those in favor of Katie's motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Our next item is discussing the school transportation issue, which um, Nate, do you want to uh, to talk to us about that? I have uh, school age kids and a lot of the people I know have school age kids. And since last year, it's been an issue uh, getting school kids to school. Luckily, um, for Selfishly for me, my kids, you know, live 1.2 miles from school, so they can walk, they can bike, but um, 
they have very heavy backpacks. They have orchestra stuff. I mean, they have a lot to carry every day. And these buses aren't showing up. Uh, there was no end in sight. So I thought, boy, you know, the pedestrian bike transit committee for the city seems like the perfect <laughs> group to kind of get some more information about what's going on and, um, you know, how we can eliminate this issue uh, in the future. Because I don't know all the details. I, I'm pretty um, not up to date about, you know, who owns buses, if it's city owned, who we need to talk to, if it's a driver shortage, or really what the issues are. Um, so I, I wanted to bring it forth to this group to see if anyone had ideas. And uh, I think more importantly, just if maybe we can get educated at one of these meetings um, to, to figure it out and how we can kind of fix that. So that's, that's the only reason I wanted to bring it up uh, at our meeting. Mark, um, you and I uh, uh, shared an email and um, have you had any conversations, you or Abby had any conversations with the school as far as what the, um, the issue is and what they may or may not be doing to, to take care of that? Um, I have not had any conversations with the school district. I thought when this was suggested to be on this committee agenda, I thought that since Dale is a member that we would discuss this with him and that he could then relay the message and concerns either back to the school district or probably more likely the other way, <laughs> informing us about what the school district is dealing with. Um, well, I can tell you that there is a lack of drivers. Uh, they're addressing part of the issue with uh, um, St. Francis in Cross Plains. At the end of this semester, they will no longer be providing transportation for St. Francis. That will free up some drivers. We're looking at West Middleton to connect the school with the new communities behind there, that would increase the walking there because right now everybody at West Middleton rides a bus because of Middle Point Road. So those are the areas we're looking at. I had a discussion with the business manager. Um, in order to increase the walking distance, they would have to look at set, having crossing guards at several locations on like um, University, Century Avenue, those are areas where they'd have to have you know cross guard and again there's the manpower issue of getting people to, that want to do that job so, so um Dale, does the school um district feel as though with uh some of these changes in west middleton st francis that this will um go a long ways towards eliminating the problem uh, a drop it, in the bucket I any, think it's a drop in the bucket. You know, right now, nothing is sustainable for any period of time. Um, okay. it's, it's getting people in the seats. Um, the DOT is very strict with their requirements to get people, you know, behind the seats. They're augmenting some of it by having uh, non-licensed drivers driving Suburbans and picking up, you know, these small onesie twosies that are out there at a distance. Um, you know, that's where we're at. Uh, I got my guys from facilities driving Suburbans. Um, I got one head custodian that's driving a bus every day. Um, and they're not happy when it snows out and I pull them off, take care of the snow. So. Sure. And just to clarify, um, you didn't use the word commercial driver's license, but that's what the issue, the distinction between a bus and a, a, a driving a Suburban. Okay. Yeah. yeah, specialized licensing. Um, out an email saying that uh, to their uh, congregation that if they can get a, a driver, the district will train them and give them a bus to transport just the St. Francis students. But um, hopefully, if we get them that they're driving the St. Francis kids, they're willing to jump in and you know, call some of our kids as well. I was just gonna make a comment. Um, Nate, thanks for bringing this up because it is a really big issue. And I think, you know, because we are also pedestrian focused that it seems like even if we do widen the distance for people to be able to walk and be able to not bus, then more people are just gonna drive to school, which causes a lot of issues as well. Um, I just know that my daughters go to Cromery and that is just a mess. Like it's super difficult to drop off and pick up. It's, it's, it's unsafe. 
I think. Um, so yeah, I think, I don't know, I don't have the answers, but I'm just glad you brought it up because it is a really big concern. I think that, you know, if we can offer more consistent busing, that would be great. And if we can encourage, you know, during when months you can bicycle, I think that would be important. I know my daughters used to go to Elmlawn and the bicycle racks, for example, weren't set out. I didn't think early enough. Um, so there's just like little things like that that maybe we could help encourage the school to encourage, you know, walking, biking mm -hmm. as much as possible. Dale, are you able to tell us uh, like who owns the buses or who hires the drivers? Who owns the buses? Who does? The school district owns the buses. So uh, Lodi School District, uh, they're a private contractor. Uh, we were just about to sign an agreement with them where they would provide drivers. And then uh, the manager up there asked, well, what is your district paying drivers? And when we told them what they were paying drivers, plus they get benefits, they pulled out of that contract because they thought they would lose drivers permanently up there. So, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I know there's some districts that, like Wanakee, for example, they, they had their own busing, but they I think they got rid of it. And now they they contract through lamers. And I mean, do you think we don't have drivers now as opposed to before because they've left to take, you know, more lucrative financial offers with bonuses and things? Or is is it a different reason we don't have drivers now that, than we did last year? I, I think it's it's a specialized group of people. It's it's mostly retired people that are doing it. And you know, when COVID came along. They wanted to be safe, just like everybody else did, and and you're just not getting, you know, people that want to put themselves in that position in that enclosed space with that number of students that are, you know. And it's it's uh, pretty much nationwide the bus driver shortage, you know. I mean, that's what I'm hearing anyhow. Is it an issue of the baby boomers are starting to age out of driving or wanting to drive buses? Is that part of it too, demographics? I think so, yeah. Um, I know we have a few that are uh, snowbirds that we're gonna be losing here shortly. You know, they, they'll drive and when they, you know, Christmas comes and they head south and, and we got another route to fill. So are, are all of your routes filled with um, basically part-time people? Um, I would say pretty much uh, if, if you, know, you get people that want to drive the midday routes and stuff like that, you could probably get 40 hours a week. But again, is it uh, guaranteed 40 hours a week? Probably not. You're filling in some of those hours with trips and stuff like that. And I, we've looked at options of uh, you know, splitting them up, having them drive bus, do some custodial work or some food service work in between to try and get them to 40 hours you know, so they get the benefits. Yeah, that's just kind of what I was thinking. Is there any way to you know, kind of enhance it so that it's, it's not just a part-time wage, but it's also a benefit package? Right. And you, you haven't really had too much luck with with that no, not a lot of bus drivers want to serve lunch to the kids, you know. And yeah, and right, right. Our custodial work is second shift. So, you know, come and drive a morning route, an afternoon route, and then go work at a school at night. You know? Yeah, yeah, not, not necessarily an attractive way to go. But you get your summers off. <laughs> so, can we sign everybody up to drive bus? <laughs> <laughs> hey Nate, don't you need a part-time job in the morning? Hey, yeah, right. I need more. Um, no, but to give give some context here, like you know, there's there were times last year when you know the kids were standing in the bus. Um, they were picking up extra kids. This year, there, there's no bus, and if there is, they send out emails saying the kids will be an hour and a half or more late to school. Yeah. I know uh, out at uh, Glacier Creek, they have a late bus um, that, uh, you know, the kids get on the bus early and then go to school all day. Their lunch is at 1130 and they're not getting on a bus to head home till almost five o'clock, you know, and then you got an hour on the bus. So they're now providing 
afternoon snacks while they're waiting for the bus to come. So it's, we're just trying to get by, but it's, it's not sustainable. Uh, so is the school gonna have to look at, um, you know, cause obviously it's a financial issue also, but um, maybe a public private partnership where you, you go with the lamers and the school district or, or some kind of, again, some kind of public private cooperation in order to, to solve this problem? We can definitely look at that. I mean, I, we thought we had that with those drivers coming from Lodi and then uh, and they pulled them out. Is there any, um, um, has anybody approached Badger Bus or any organizations like that? I can definitely bring that up to um, my boss. So um, I know in Madison, they use the city transport. Right. Um, the kids got to go to bus stops and get on a bus there and then they transport them. I don't know if that's, that's an option in Middleton or not. But it would seem to me um, in light of the, how extensive that <clears throat> this problem is that it probably is something where you're gonna have to look at any and all options, even if they sound a little goofy, just to explore them. Um, whether that be uh, is, you know, a kid picks up the Madison Metro in Orchid Heights and gets dropped off on um, Donna Drive to go to to Cromery. I mean, that's kind of what Madison does. So, I mean, we, we might have to look at, at all different options. I agree. How filled up are these buses? Most of them are pretty full. Okay. Um, yeah, they're really full. My, it's like three to a seat. Is that true? Is that true at most? Uh, well, Carrie, you're in the city and so is Nate. Um, fortunately, you know, having urban schools or more, more urban than in the rural areas, you're not as dependent on the bus if you live within a mile. But out in town of Middleton, town of Springfield, <laughs> everyone's taking the bus. And the distances, of course, are much greater. So the need out there is probably even greater. I guess on uh, I'm living on South Avenue and I see some kids riding their bike and they ride them on the sidewalks, but I don't blame them. Um, the way the traffic comes, particularly of parents taking their kids to school at that same time, if there's a lot of traffic and the speed is quite high. Um, but, you know, I, it's, I, I just get so worried that some kid's going to get hit out here because of the speed of the traffic and coming both directions. I, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe we just need to start doing more police enforcement on the speed on some of these streets. We have that same issue at the high school of traffic going through there. And now the Clark Street building is now our early learning center. So we have, you know, four year old students walking in there and, and we're trying to get the traffic slowed down. We put some of those uh, radar signs to, you know, just letting them know what their speed is coming through that parking lot there. Um, added some stop signs in the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. We, asked, we asked our liaison officer to go down there and that's, you know, that's tough to get them out of the building. With the increased car traffic now too, with the lack of buses, they, they park in the, the bike lanes, you know, and the queue will go from the intersection all the way you know, to whatever other end of the street. So the kids don't even have a bike lane or, you know, the sidewalks are filled with kids walking. So then there's nowhere for them to bike really. Well, I think that, um... I don't know that this is the problem that we're going to be able to solve tonight. And I'm not even sure which direction that we take it. It's, it's an all encompassing problem. It seems like, I mean, I guess my suggestion would be reach out to whatever private bus services there may happen to be. Um, we'll have to talk to, to chief Helen brand to see if he can do some more enforcement in, in these high traffic areas like Ken was talking about and over by, 
because I've I, I see exactly what you're talking about over at Cromery, where there's so many cars lined up dropping kids off that um, it's hard for it's hard for a car to get through, a person to get through, a bike to get through, and that's just up the street from the police department. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe um, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea for for the the school transportation director to have a meeting with Chief Ellenbrand and see if they can um, figure out some times to do some more enforcement. I mean, that's not gonna solve the transportation issue any, but it, it may help go towards the safety end of the issue. Yeah, I've, I've asked even for just even more like crossing guards, you know, just, just some more adults out there helping direct pedestrian flow and traffic flow, because there's only one so yeah okay does anyone else have any comments dale if there's um when you um, go back to the to the school and share some of the the things that we talked about if if um at our next meeting if there's uh anything that you can bring forward or anything that you want to um, ask us that, um, you know, we'll try to uh, work collaboratively to, to figure out a solution and, um, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure what we can do at this point, but keep us, keep us in the loop and let us know if there's anything that we can do to do to help. Okay. We'll do. Absolutely. I do know one of the things they're working on with, with, uh, transportation, it's, it was a stumbling block was, um, there's a lot of non-English speaking um, people out there willing to work, but to have that communication, um, not only from the driver to the student back and forth, but um, over the radio, if there's something that comes up, that language is a barrier and we're looking at some electronic devices to aid with that. Plus we, um, my understanding, we have two bilingual uh, staff that are coming on board for transportation. So that's, I mean, that's something we're looking at too. Good. Outstanding. Okay, if there's nothing else, um, I have no future, updates. No updates. Okay. No updates. Any anything for future agendas? Any topics? I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to in the future discuss uh, doing kind of committee based uh, walks, bikes, and transit rides um just partly it's a way for the community to join us in the community while we're walking the streets but it's also just uh <clears throat> we need to know that we need to know the networks that we're talking about we need to understand them as pedestrians as cyclists and as transit riders to the best of our ability um so yeah i'd like to talk about that in the future Sure, we can put that on the agenda, particularly as the weather gets nicer. We've done that once before, once or twice before, haven't we, Mark? Where we've taken oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. a bike tour as as part. It wasn't. It was a special event. It wasn't necessarily as part of our, our meeting, but we went through and rode the trails and discussed certain certain spots. So uh, th that's a good idea uh, to get back to that. And Dan, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call. To move ahead on the agenda, I was worried you were going to ask for a motion to adjourn. That's the only reason why I said that. <laughs> Sorry. What's that? I didn't mean to move ahead on the agenda. It was I was just was I was worried you were going to call for a motion to adjourn. That's why I, I oh, said we had so. no worries, no worries. All right, I think that fulfills our agenda. However, yep. So I thank everybody for coming. Wish everybody a, a happy holidays and. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? I will move uh, that we adjourn. This is Katie. All right, Katie, do I have a second? I can. Okay, Carrie, I'll have, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for adjournment. All those in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.